If you don't, it, you know what I mean? Like if, you, if you're, if you're sure. probably assigned exercise and the exercise requires the shoulder, then by definition, you should probably know what the hell that shoulder is, right? So, right. so is, there, there's a two, two main things that I say I'm looking for when I'm just doing it. And for me, one thing that I hate about the fitness world and their assessments is that people think that you could just like watch with your eyes one time and know everything that's going on with the human body in front of you, which I think is, we know is absurd because it's just too complicated that. So I am, I film all of this from multiple angles when I'm going through an assessment. It's a very thorough assessment. It takes a long time. So I have multiple angles of all my clients of their workspace assessments, of their table tests and everything else. Um, but I'm looking for, looking for just general range of motion. And in this case, since they're actively moving their joint through space, it is active range of motion. I'm not checking passive yet, although I do get to that. Um, but then the main thing I'm looking for is joint independence or articular in, uh, independence. Because if I see <clears throat> that the person can accomplish a large volume of space, which is kind of what we're deciding as workspace here is the volume of space that you could gather around your body with that movement, but it requires 17 other joints in your body to gather that motion or that workspace. That is not the workspace that I'm looking for. So I'm giving some cueing between a radiation and some conscious blocking strategies to try and see like, what can your shoulder do independent of spine, independent of your hips, independent of your elbow. And if the client understands the goal and they actually just try and like I said, trying to move the humerus on the glenoid fossa, scapula moves a little bit. But if you really try and get the shoulder to move by itself, you gather a lot of information about that individual. And that's one of the things that I posted um, as the before and after, not just the range of motion improvements, but I also showed the workspace improvements. I showed cars day one and then cars day 90. And it's not a major difference. It was only 90 days. This person had multiple decades of professional sports. So 90 days is a small time for an intervention where we are very early on in our programming. But in the first 90 days, one of the things that you notice in the before and after the cars is independence is coming back. In the, in the beginning videos, there's a lot of interdependence. There's a lot of scapula. There's a lot of shoulder hiking. There's a lot of hip turning. There's, there's, there's spine turning. And there's just less. It's not gone, but there's less of it 90 days later. So he's gaining back shoulder independence. His, his body's getting back options. It's getting back variability within that shoulder because we're getting back one of the primary things, which is rotation. <laughs>